Department. around there. Okay. What? In the vehicle. Yeah, I I went around looked inside all the vehicles. I didn't see anything. Yeah, that's fine. Well, there's got. I'm assuming there's a mother around here somewhere. Coming out. I knew it. I think this door might connect, so I'm going to open it just so you guys know. All right. Okay. CRPG! Bradley! The concept of murder is undeniably disturbing, and it's not hard to see why. It is an extreme act of violence that goes against the very essence of life itself. What's more, murder is often unpredictable and seemingly random, making it difficult to defend ourselves against. When it comes to protecting our families, we usually guard against outside threats, but what happens when the danger comes from within? When a family member kills another, it is an especially chilling scenario that strikes at the core of our fears. And when there are no warning signs, it becomes even more perplexing. To that end, let's dive into the case of the Jackson family annihilation. Nestled on the banks of the Cedar River lies the charming city of Cedar Rapids, Iowa, a hub of culture and industry. Boasting a population of around 133,000, Cedar Rapids is a vibrant urban area that seamlessly blends suburban and rural living. It also happens to be one of the few cities in the world that has its government offices on an island. Known as a leading manufacturing region in the U.S., Cedar Rapids has been home to celebrities such as Elijah Wood and Ron Livingston. Not to mention, the city was once home to famed painter Grant Wood, creator of the iconic American Gothic painting, and no relation to Elijah. But perhaps what truly sets Cedar Rapids apart is its nickname, the City of Five Seasons. This moniker encapsulates the idea that there's a fifth season to enjoy all the others. This is also the city where the Jackson family resided, in a large home on a quiet, well-manicured street named Oak Leaf Court. According to those who spoke with local media, the Jackson family were known as quiet neighbors and friendly people. They've been good neighbors, one man said. They are really good people, nice people. The Jacksons purchased their five-bedroom, four-bath, 3,400-square-foot home on Oak Leaf Court Northeast in September 2011 for $396,500 after relocating from Oregon. The household consisted of Father Jan Jackson, Mother Melissa Jackson, and their two children, 20-year-old Alexander and 19-year-old Sabrina. Alexander and Sabrina were students at the University of Iowa, attending the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences. They had previously attended Kennedy High School in Cedar Rapids, where Alexander made a name for himself as an Eagle Scout. Along with the Save Cedar Rapids Heritage Organization, he helped organize a project to rehabilitate the historic Frankie House for sale to low-income families. He garnered recognition for his efforts in the local newspaper, The Gazette. Despite the tragedy that would befall the Jackson family, there appeared to be no record of documented mental health problems or criminal history for either Alexandra or Sabrina as of June 2021. However, while Sabrina had performed admirably in the classroom, Alexander had vastly underachieved. This created a conflict with his father. In Alexander's first academic year at Iowa, he performed as expected. However, there was slippage in his grades in the fall semester of year two, and then, despite being enrolled for 13 credits in the spring semester, he had only passed one class. 
His father was dissatisfied with his performance and stated he would only pay for half of his education going forward due to his lack of effort. When Alex mentioned he was considering taking a break from school altogether, Jan advised him he had a choice to make, find employment or move out of the house. Tuesday, June 15, 2021, started off like any other in the serene neighborhood of Cedar Rapids. The sun was gleaming and the temperature was a perfect 72 degrees as neighbors went about their usual morning routines. But little did they know that a nightmare was unfolding just a few doors down. The peaceful silence was shattered by the sound of gunshots and the walls and floors of the Jackson home were stained with blood. It was a scene straight out of a horror movie and yet no one heard a thing. How could such a violent and gruesome act take place without anyone noticing? The answer came in the form of a phone call. At 8.23 a.m., Alexander Jackson dialed 911 and the world outside the Jackson home learned of the unspeakable tragedy. One County Sheriff reports your emergency. Ugh. Someone broke into our house. Our address is 4414 Oak Leaf Court, Northeast. I've been shot. My other family member has been shot. I need help immediately. Okay, I'm getting Cedar Rapids on the line here. Ugh. I've been shot in the foot. Okay, sir, sir, stay on the, stay on the line. It's continuing to be answering. Give oh. them the address right away. One what's the address of the emergency? Uh, 4414 Oak Leaf Court, Northeast. Okay, what's going on? There, there's someone broke in. Okay. I've been shot. You've been shot? Right there, i Okay, hold on just a second. Are they still there? No, they left. They left? Did they come inside the house? <laughs> Yes. Okay, where were, where were you shot at? Downstairs. No, on your body. On your body, where have you been shot? Foot. I'm sorry, where? Foot. In your Left foot? foot? Okay, how old are you? Uh, 20. How old are you? 20. 20, okay. I'm, I've got help come in. Just stay on the line with me, okay? Do you know who was that broke in? What was that? Do you know who broke in? No. Okay. Did you get a look at them? No. Could you tell if it was a man or a woman? Uh, no. A man? Could you tell if they were white, black, Hispanic? That's okay if you don't know. Just stay on the line with me, okay? What's your first name? Uh, I'm uh, Alice. Alice, does that help come in, okay? Just stay on the line with me and don't hang up, okay? Okay. This person that you saw in your house, did they leave out the back door? Yeah, yeah. Okay. What's the time delay? How long ago was this? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Okay. Do you remember anything? Ago, okay. I think Do you stop my phone? Okay. Do you think it was like an hour ago or like five minutes ago? You don't know? Ten minutes ago? Okay, that's all right. I understand. You're in some... Okay. Hello? Alex, I, yep, I said I'm coming. I'm just talking on the radio, too, okay? Okay. Do you remember what color shirt or what color hair this guy had? Anything about him? Um, what? Do you think it was a black male or a black shirt? Uh, both. Okay. Ooh. And was it a long gun or was it a short gun, like a handgun? A long gun. It was a long gun? Like a rifle style? Yes. Okay. Okay. He says he's a... <sighs> Okay, I've got them coming right there on Oak Leaf Court, so they're almost there. Okay, where are you in the house, Alex? Downstairs. You're in the lower in level? Okay. In my room. In your room? Okay. Oh. Um, are you able Are you able to, to meet them at the back door? Are you able to walk? Oh. Uh. If not, just stay in your room. 
Okay, Alex. Is that back door still wide open? Maybe, yeah. Okay, I'm going to tell him to come in that back door, okay? <laughs> Just you and your sister in the house, right? Yeah. No parents or grandparents, animals? Oh, my mom is here, too. Your mom is there, too? Yeah. Okay, so you, your sister, and your mom? Yeah. Yeah? Do you know her number by heart? Do you know that? No. Okay. Ooh. You're doing good, Alex. Alex, do you have any weapons downstairs? Any guns, knives, anything like that? No, but there's a no. gun on the floor. There is? That's not yours? It, it's ours, but we got shot by it. So he took your gun and shot you? Yes. Okay. Hold on just a second. Let me make sure. I tell my officers this. Hold on. Uh. Oh. Very last house on the dead end on the right? No, you're the first house, aren't you? Yeah. Okay. Okay, they're coming into your backyard, okay? Thank you. 
Yeah, if you want to. Oh, yeah. 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 Um, well, I'll clear worst buckles. Corey, he went out front. You want to take him in there to do the three? Yeah. What do you want in the two? Go ahead, Corey. Crime scene investigators discovered that Jan, Melissa, and Sabrina had been murdered. They each sustained multiple gunshot wounds. A 22 caliber Browning semi-automatic rifle was recovered from the scene, which authorities suspect was the murder weapon. As per the police complaint, Alexander Jackson informed investigators that he was asleep when his family was attacked. He said he woke up to the sound of gunfire and encountered a masked intruder. They struggled over the rifle, during which Alexander suffered a gunshot wound to his foot. He reported to the officers that he and his father had cleaned the rifle the previous night and left it on the fireplace. Alexander described the intruder as a black man dressed in black attire and green shoes. The police found no evidence of forced entry or burglary in the home during their initial investigation. Review of ring camera footage revealed no one entering or exiting the home. Although Jackson denied shooting his family members, he acknowledged that his father had recently advised him to either find employment or move out of the house. In addition, the Gazette would later report Alexander was in line to inherit more than $2 million from his parents' estate. Alexander was taken by ambulance to Unity Point Health, St. Luke's Hospital for treatment of a foot wound. Police continued to question him during the ambulance ride. You ran into who? The man. Okay. You ran into him how? Thank you. You already did. With like a fist or... Okay. Okay. So you're, <laughs> you were sleeping on the couch in the porch. Or sorry, you were sleeping in the porch. Yeah. Okay. Then what happened? Did you hear gunshots or what? Yeah. Okay, you heard gunshots. <clears throat> and then saw somebody in your house? Yeah. Okay. Good. We are all good. Uh, Alex, you go to school anywhere? Um, I guess university. Which university? Uh, Iowa. University of Iowa? Yeah, that one. You good to go? That, I'm good to go. That's a good one. Right. Yeah. Can I give you some medicine here? Okay. You allergic to anything? That's not that I know. Alex, who opened the back door? Alexander was arrested after treatment and held in custody at the Lynn County Jail. Bail was set at $3 million cash, $1 million for each of the slain family members. The Iowa v. Alexander Jackson trial opened in the Lynn County Courthouse on January 13, 2023. If the intruder was holding the gun, where would you have expected to find Mr. Jackson's fingerprints? Uh, not on the buttstock end. On the, on the barrel end is where I would expect to find those. Can you remind us how you described the quality of those prints? Uh, the quality was very good on those. There was lots of detail present. Would you expect the quality of a print to be that good if a struggle was ensuing over this firearm? Uh, not at all. You say not at all very definitively. Can you tell us why you say that? It, it, 
if there's a struggle uh, and somebody was gripping the gun there, there's going to, that means there's forces on both sides. So that gun's going to be moving around. Um, and prints are very delicate. So, you know, as we described earlier, if you slide your hand across something, it makes smear marks and kind of distorts the whole print. Um, those prints didn't really have any indication at all of um, that type of movement on the print. Um, means that they were large enough and of good quality enough, there's a lot of crisp detail in those prints. Based on your training and experience, Investigator Bosenberg, did you form an opinion as to whether or not there were any signs of forced entry to this back door? I did not uh, see any of those signs on this door. The back door was not the only um, point of entry or exit from this home, correct? Correct. During your investigation, did you happen to observe the other doors to the residence? Yes. Did you, on any of the uh, entrance exit doors to the residence, observe any signs of forced entry? No. Mr. Bosenberg, you know that Layton 3 does not belong to Alexandra Jackson, don't you? I don't know if I could definitively say that 100%. Well, Layton 3 was suitable for identification, right? I don't even know if I would go that far. There was data points there that could be used for identification. You entered it into the computer and it kicked back other prints, right? Yes, but that doesn't really give us an indication if it's identifiable or not. Not one of those was Alexander Jackson's print, was it? I don't know that for sure, because when it kicks it back, it kicks back numbers, not a name. You know it didn't kick back Alexander Jackson. I can't definitively answer that right now. I, I think, know. well, it was because you can't remember? Yeah, I don't remember the numbers that popped up on the screen for number three. If you couldn't exclude Alexander Jackson, you would have put that in your report. Would you not have? I'm sorry, could, could you say that again? So there's no mention in your report that Layton 3 could possibly belong to Alexander Jackson, right? Yes, I didn't mention that it could belong to him. And that's because you excluded him as a potential source for Layton 3, and that's why you put it in the computer. They were put in the computer first before I did any comparison to any other known prints. And you say, can you exclude Alexander Jackson or not as the potential source for that latent three? I have not found a match for that latent print. I don't know uh, the source of that latent print at all. I understand that. Yes. I understand that you haven't found a match. And you didn't know whether some of the prints that came back on the computer were matches or not because you didn't have enough information, right? Right. But there are times when you, even though you can't have a match, you can exclude people because there's enough difference. Isn't it true that you could exclude Alexander Jackson as the source of latent three? Yes, it would be a true statement that he potentially could be excluded by a... a thorough examination of those two. Are you saying you didn't do a thorough examination? I examined them for a while, but like I said earlier, the palm print is so big and there was um, the detail of that one print was so few that I wasn't able to match it up at all, but I don't know if I would go as far as, it's, it's an unknown, I don't know where that came from. I understand, but you do know that it didn't come from Alexander Jackson. That's a good possibility, yes. Good morning, Mr. Jackson. Good morning. So, Mr. Jackson, you understand, sir, that you have a right to testify, is that correct? Correct. All right. And there's a lot of things during the course of a trial that um, 
are strategic choices that uh, lawyers get to make on behalf of their clients. This is not one of those choices. So you understand that whether or not you testify is solely your decision, um, not your lawyer's decision, not my decision, not anybody's decision except yours. Do you understand that? Correct. All right. I'm sorry. Is that a yes? Yes. All right. Um, it, have you had enough time to talk about uh, your decision to testify or not with uh, Mr. Johnson, Ms. Garner, and or Ms. Foley? Uh, yes. All right. And are you satisfied with the advice, in, uh, advice um, that they've given you in connection with your decision to testify or not testify? Yes. Have they... Have you had an opportunity to ask any questions you may have about your decision to testify? Uh, yes. All right. And is it your decision then to not testify in this proceeding? It is my decision not to testify. All right. During the trial, the prosecution contended Alexander shot his family after his father told him to get a job or move out of the house. At the time, he had $30 in his bank account. He then called 911 and fabricated a home invasion story that was not supported by evidence. First Assistant Lynn County Attorney Monica Slaughter told jurors Alexander shot his father as he came down the stairs, then stood over him and shot him two more times in the head. His sister was found shot to death in her bed, and his mother was found dead on the floor of the master bedroom. He then shot himself in the foot. Prosecutor Slaughter stated, Is money the motive? Would he inherit all the money and assets from his parents? I don't know, but I don't have to prove a motive. There's never going to be a good enough reason why he killed his family. The defense countered that the prosecution's case was entirely circumstantial, and no evidence was presented that would disprove Alexander's version of events. Defense attorney Tyler Johnson stated that the Jacksons were a happy family, and many witnesses testified that they knew of no issues between Alexander and his family. Moreover, said Johnston, Alexander had no history of mental illness or violence. Reasonable doubt is all over this case. He had no reason to harm his family, added Johnston. All right, would the parties please stand? On each of, as to each of the three counts, um, form of verdict two has been executed. We, the jury, find the defendant, Alexander Jackson, guilty of the offense of murder in the first degree. And Ms. Pearson, are you the foreperson? And is that the verdict of the jury? It is, Your Honor. Or the verdicts of the jury? Yes. Mr. Johnson, would you like the jury polled? Yes, Your Honor. I'm going to do this alphabetically. So, um, On March 3rd, 2023, justice was finally served in the Jackson family annihilation case. Alexander Jackson was sentenced to three consecutive life terms without the possibility of parole, ensuring that he will never again be able to walk the streets as a free man. As we continue to grapple with the aftermath of this tragedy, we can take some comfort in the fact that justice has been served. While the loss of the Jackson family members will never be forgotten, we can honor their memory by working towards a safer and more compassionate world. Through continued efforts to prevent violence and support those affected by it, we can move closer to a future where such senseless acts are no longer a part of our reality. What are your thoughts on this case? In your opinion, is there any way this tragedy could have been prevented? As usual, feel free to share your thoughts below.